Ten years ago, a series of gates linking to an alternate dimension appeared. These gates brought danger and chaos as powerful monsters emerged and wreaked havoc on Earth. However, a few humans gained supernatural powers and became known as hunters. Based on their magical properties, they are ranked in order of S, A, B, C, D, or E rank. Back in the present day, three years later, where a few hunters are ready to raid a gate, Kim is greeted by Park, who he thought had retired, but Park said he needed the money for his unborn child. Just then, everyone's attention changed to Jinwoo who arrived. They all give him a pleasant welcome, which makes him awkward. Park then asks Kim whether he is a big deal, but Kim laughs off and says, It's the exact opposite. He's the weakest hunter ever, and raiding only an E-gate landed him in a hospital. So as a rule for the hunters, any raid he joins is deemed an easy gate. Meanwhile, Jinwoo hears all of these and sighs, thinking to himself, It's all true. Jinwoo then hears a voice calling him, and as he looks up, he notices Juhi and greets her. She asked what happened to his face, but Jinwoo brushed it off, saying the same things as usual. She asked him to be more careful, but Jinwoo embarrassingly said it was only an E rank dungeon, but he was hurt even then. Jinwoo explains to Juhi that the hunters didn't bring any healers because everyone is high ranked. This angers Juhi, saying everyone thinks for themselves, but Jinwoo admits it's his fault and says he's used to it. Jinwoo then notices everyone getting ready to enter the dungeon and tells Juhi they should join too. At the entrance, they met Song who asked if he could be the leader of the party. Everyone welcomed the idea as he was the most skilled one. Walking by, Kim tells Jinwoo to stay behind them as all the party members head inside the dungeon. Before going in, Jinwoo looked at his knife and mentioned there is barely any magic power on it, but this was all he could afford. He then brushed himself off and went inside. Meanwhile, in Hunter's HQ, President Go tells his assistant, that the government doesn't seem to care about the problem of a dungeon break and only wants the resources that can be collected from them, but at the same time thinks their demand is logical as the hunters can make a living by selling those resources. He further clarifies that the essence stone collected from high-ranked monsters can be used to craft strong weapons and gear, while the mana stones have similar properties but are less powerful but he thinks the government's interest is different from theirs as they want to use the stones as a way to produce clean energy without the use of nuclear or water energy. Back at the dungeon, Jinwoo is covered in blood but is happy as he finally gets an essence stone. Suddenly, he hears Juhi's voice and as he turns around a monster attacks him, Jinwoo manages to evade the attack and strike the monster, but his knife breaks into pieces which causes the monster to stab him. Luckily, Park saves Jinwoo just in time and asks Juhi to heal him. The rest of the members then clears the dungeon and while Juhi is still healing Jinwoo, she asks him why he is working as a hunter and if he keeps going on, then something worse might really happen. Jinwoo asks for her forgiveness and thinks the E-rank stone is all he could gain, and it's hardly worth dying for. Just then, a party member found a cave. They all went to go take a look and thought it might be a double dungeon. One of the members says, even though they beat the boss, it seems there's no sign of the dungeon closing, which means there is more loot down there. Song then asks the other members to follow procedure and wait for the Hunter Association orders, but Park says it's still part of the D-Rank dungeon and they should go in before someone else. However, Song is still skeptical about the risk and asks the party members to take a vote to decide whether to continue or not. The vote stands six to six between the members and it's up to Jinwoo to make the final decision. Jinwoo wants to give up and going further will be suicide, but since his father has gone missing and he needs the money for his mom's treatment and still has to send his sister to college, he decides to say yes. Meanwhile, in Hunter's HQ, newly awakened Hunter tests their rank by placing their hand on a black ball and based on their rank, guild recruiters scout them. 
One of the Hunter Guild masters mentioned that age and gender don't matter and if they have talent, that's all they need and further clarified that it's likely that they will find anyone who can compare to Cha Hain, who was shown as a smoking blondie. Inside the dungeon, the group has been walking for 40 minutes without reaching the dungeon but still has 20 minutes to go until the gate closes, which they think it's enough time to raid a dungeon. Jinwu asks forgiveness from Juhei because of the way he voted, but Johe shouts at him saying he would be dead if the attack is a little higher and he still wants to go further. Jinwu thinks to himself that he was only able to stay alive because Juhi is a B-rank healer and he would not have that luxury the next time. Juhi then asks Jinwu if he understands the problem and subsequently asks him for a date, which surprises Jinwu because it's the first time a girl asks him out. Suddenly, Kim mentioned they had arrived at the dungeon. Upon reaching, they encountered a large, intimidating door which is rare for a dungeon. Kim mentioned that there was no way he was going back empty-handed after coming this far, and the rest of the group agreed. Back at the Hunter's HQ, the new Hunters are watching President Go's video speech. He explains that it's been over 10 years since the gates opened and there are still so many unknown factors about them. He further clarifies that being a hunter is a risky job and don't ever let your guard down in there and most of all, never be greedy or arrogant. After entering through the door, the dungeon lits up in a blue flame with giant statues surrounding the entire area. The dungeon looks like a battle arena rather than a cave. Someone say that the statues look old and some of them have instruments rather than weapons. Jinwu then looks at a statue that seems the biggest one there, but everyone finds the statue kind of creepy. Someone then notices that there is not a single monster to be found and Song seems a bit anxious as he finds a magic circle and an ancient script. Juhi then panics and tells Jinwu that she saw the big statue's eyes move. Jinwu brushes her off, saying she must have imagined it. Suddenly, the entrance door closes off completely, which makes everyone panic and think they are trapped inside. One of the members got angry at the group, saying they didn't take this seriously, and said they can keep the treasure they found in here for themselves and proceeded to leave the dungeon. Just then the statue nearby him moves, but before Song can tell him, the statue cuts the guy in half. The party looks in disbelief at what kind of situation they got themselves into. Jinwu, still in shock, thinks the guy who just died was a D-rank and was stronger than him but was killed in an instant. He panicked and said this was supposed to be a D-rank dungeon and no strong monster shouldn't be here. He then recalls Juhi saying the big statue eyes moved earlier. Jinwu then slowly turned his head to look at the statue and the statue looked back at him. And that is the end of the video. Thank you for watching.